Morning boys and girls, it's Wednesday, it's time for assembly again. We're going to sing three songs right through. Now let's all sing up. Really good song. Go tell the good news, because it is good news.
Thank you, Lord, for making me. Before that, we've got two videos today of children all over the country picking up litter, rubbish, that's been thrown down on their public roads with their parents who've been out collecting, filling their bags, and we've got prizes on them. We've got so many different ones, we're putting it all together on a Friday, we're going to announce the winners for the litter collecting competition. Okay, here's the first slot. Boom! I'm gonna follow 
follow Jesus wherever he will be. I'm going to follow Jesus all the way. Breaks through the darkness, follow his lead and light it up, light it up. Jesus will guide us through every dark time. Follow his lead and light it up, light up the world. Light up the world. Light up the world. Whoa. So good. Well done. Well done. And imagine everyone across the country lifted all the rubbish up and nobody ever threw anything else out. The country would be absolutely beautiful. So remember that. If you see people throw rubbish on the floor, on the ground, tell them to pick it up and put it into the bin. Now, we're going to show another one uh, after the story, after the quiz. But today we're going to go to another little boy in the, in the, in the Bible. Does anyone even know what today's story is about? Who do you think it's about? I'll give you a clue. It's about a wee boy. Old Testament, yes? Yes? Isaac! How do you know that? Because it's behind me? Where? What's his name? Isaac. How do you know it's Isaac? Come. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, here. Ah, yeah. Did you see that? Isaac, yes. Okay, let's go right right back away, right in the middle of the Bible. In the Old Testament, we come to a man called Abraham. Abraham was known as a friend of God. Imagine that. When God looks down, he often says things about people to encourage them. And Abraham was known as a friend of God. And I wonder, boys and girls, are you God's friend? Can God look down and say, you are my friend? It's nice when I go out somewhere and somebody says to me, this is Colin, he's my friend. That's a nice thing to say. But if somebody said, this is Colin, he's not a very friendly person, I'd go, hey, do you mean that? And you'd probably be hurt by it. But Abraham was known as a friend of God. Do you know why? Because he walked with God and he tried to please God with his life. He wasn't perfect. He always he made mistakes, but he tried his best to please God. But more than that, in his heart, he knew God and he, he believed in God and he was a Christian, a believer. And that's why when God looked down, he said, Abraham, you're my friend. And did you know God gave Abraham a promise? He said, Abraham, you're going to have so many children. It's going to be, there's going to be as many children as there are stars in the sky and sand on the seashore. Now, have you ever tried to count the stars? If you can't count sheep, count stars. You can't, there's millions of them. And get, a, get your hand full of sand and it's impossible to count the little grains of sand and every one of them is different, every star is different, yet God knows them all by name. What God meant was not physical children but it was children by faith who would also believe in God. Believers, Christians, and I wonder are you one of those adapted children of Abraham through faith just like Abraham believed in God and walked with God. I do the same and you can also do the same. But Abraham, he was married to Sarah, his wife. And he often wondered, God, you've promised to give me a son. But I'm 100 years old and my wife Sarah is 90 years old. We're both beyond the age of having children. How is this possible? And they lived by faith. They walked and they, they traveled through the wilderness. They traveled through the country with their, and their animals, their servants, their camels, their belongings. And they didn't have a fancy house. They lived in a tent. And one day when they were sitting living in their tent, three men came to visit them. The Bible says there were angels sent by God. And these angels came to remind Abraham, Abraham, did you remember God said to you, you're going to have a son? Yes, yes, well, uh, I don't think that's meant to happen. And we can accept God's will for whatever will happen. My, my wife's 90 and I'm at 100. No, well, God sent us to remind you, you're still going to have a son. And when Sarah heard that, the Bible says she laughed. And one of the angels said, Sarah, are you laughing? She said, no, no. She laughed because of unbelief. Unbelief. Because of her age, it was way beyond years of having a child. And the angel reminded them that God said, Sarah, you will have a baby. And she did laugh. 
And do you know what happened within a short time, about a year? There was a wee baby born into the home. And this wee baby is called Isaac. And Isaac means laughter or joy. And I've got a, an uncle called Isaac and a brother called Isaac. And they don't really talk so much, but they love to laugh. And no matter what you say, they laugh. And they've got a really funny laugh. They just love to have joy and love to have laughter. It's wonderful. And here's Abraham and he loves his son. As any father does and any mother does, they love their children. And they're the most precious thing in this earth. But as the little boy grew up and Abraham spent so much time with him, God then challenged Abraham to one of the greatest tests any father could possibly go through. Because Abraham was a friend of God. He spent a lot of time with God, talking to God, praying to God, walking with God. But now he's spending so much time with his son. One night, God said, Abraham, I want you to do something for me. Anything, Lord, anything you want me to do. He said, I want you to, pre to prepare your son, Isaac, and take him to the mountain, Mount Moriah, and prepare him for a sacrifice. Abraham goes, my son, Isaac, the one I love, the one you promised, the one you give, you're going to take him from me. Yes, Abraham, your son, Isaac. I want you to prepare him for sacrifice. Now Abraham had a big choice between God and the son. Who did he love most? The Bible tells us no one must ever come between us and God. We must always love God first. Love our parents, of course. Love our family, of course. Yes, but we always must love God above everyone and above anything else. And then early in the morning when Isaac was, of course, was much bigger than this, much older. Here he is. Abraham prepares him and says, Isaac, up you get we're going on a journey. A long journey was going to take 50 miles. And as he journeyed through, Isaac was all excited. Where are we going to? Who are we going to meet? What are we going to do? Where are we going to sleep? And he took with him servants and donkeys and, and belongings and food. And as they walked and as they talked, Isaac was all excited. Then they got to the bottom of the mountain, Mount Moriah. And Abraham said this very interesting words to the servants. He said, you made at the bottom. Both I and the lad are going up and we will return to you. He knew that even if God took his son's life, God would bring him back to him again. That's why Abraham was a man of faith. He knew that God would do that and could do that as he could and would. And Abraham, then they start to gather wood and then Isaac's all curious because in Bible times they would sacrifice animals and that was a sign, that, of course, a picture of the Lord Jesus who would become the greatest sacrifice and this would happen to animals and Isaac said, Father, I've got the wood and you've got the fire, but where is this sacrifice? And you can imagine Abraham, how could he possibly, as he held back the tears, say, Isaac, you are going to be the sacrifice. But he said these very words of wisdom. He said, Isaac, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. God himself will provide. And this was going to be a good picture of the Lamb of God. Jesus was taking away the sin of the world. The picture of the cross. Even though this event was thousands of years later. And whenever they got to the top of the mountain, boys and girls, Isaac sat down with Abraham talked to him. And he said, Isaac, God spoke to me the other night. And he told me to bring you up to the mountain and prepare you for the, for the sacrifice. And Isaac was young and he was strong and he was fast. He could easily have fled the scene and run for his life. But Isaac was also a boy of great faith. He also loved the Lord. He loved his father. He said, if that's what God has told you to do, I'm willing to lay down my life. If that's what God wants. Obedient child. Obedience. But boys and girls, this is not a picture of cruelty. It's a picture of the Lord Jesus. Do you know why? Because in this picture, Abraham reminds me of God. And Isaac reminds me of the Lord Jesus. And the altar of stone reminds me of the cross. And God so loved the world, he sent his lovely son Jesus into the world to die on the cross for me and for you. And Abraham, he loved God with all his heart and he loved his son. He had to make a choice between his son and between God. And he knew he must go with God. And he takes his knife out and he says goodbye to his son, wiping the tear from his eye. And the big knife goes right up as he turns his head away. And just as he's about to bring the knife down, he hears a voice, Abraham, throw down your knife. Don't harm your son. 
Abraham, God never told you to kill your son. He asked you to prepare your son. And that was the greatest test any man has ever gone through. A test of obedience to God. To prepare his son. But that of course was a picture. And boys and girls, you know what happened? And the Bible says Abraham turned round in the, in the bush. And the thicket of the bush, a ram caught his horns in the bush. And, was, and we could not escape. And Isaac was set free. And that lamb, ram that day became a substitute. Because instead of Isaac dying, the ram then was put in place of Isaac. And do you know what that reminds me of? Boys and girls, we don't have to die. Do you know why? Because the Lord Jesus died in our place. He became our substitute. Instead of us, Jesus died to, as a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. My sin and your sin. And I am forgiven today. I'm saved today because of what Jesus has done for me. And boys and girls, what a picture. And what a picture of love demonstrated on the cross when Jesus laid down his life. And that's a lovely picture of Jesus dying on the cross. And that day the ram had to die. Had to shed his blood for the sacrifice for the sin of that day. A picture of what Jesus done. Died a cruel death. An awful death. That we can have life. The Bible says if you've got the son of God you've got life. But if you don't have the son of God you don't have life. This was a picture by, of a man. A friend of God Abraham. And a son Isaac who obediently. And that's a picture of the Lord Jesus in obedience to his father. Came into this world, went through growing up and in obedience went to Jerusalem on the little donkey to die on the cross. But he rose again from the dead, gone, gone to heaven to come back again. Obedient to, the, to his father, to God. A lovely picture of Isaac picturing the Lord Jesus. What does that mean for you? Can you be called a friend of God? Are you obedient to the Lord? Obedience is the very best way to, to live your life pleasing and proving to God. Wonderful to be a Christian. Wonderful to be a child of God. And open all these lovely Old Testament stories to bring to you. So that's our little boy today was called Isaac. All right. Now what happened Isaac? I forgot to tell you this part. He's now 40 years old. And God gave Abraham a son. He said, you'll have a son. And your son will have a son. And son after son after son. Now Isaac's 40 years old. He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have a partner. He doesn't have one to have a child with. But he needed a wife. And one day Abraham said to his servant, go to the faraway country. And I want you to have one job. To find a wife for my son. And he goes to the faraway country with his donkeys, with his camels. Sorry, with his camels and with his servants. And he begins to pray, Lord, I'm here, a faraway country, to find a wife for Isaac. I don't know anyone. And he sits at a well, and he prays, Lord, the first person comes to this well, the first girl, the first woman, I'm going to pray, and ask her for a drink. And if she gives me a drink, that's fine. But if she offers to draw water for my camels, ten camels, ten camels, I know that's the wife for Isaac. This girl suddenly comes along called Rebecca. She says, excuse me, can I have a drink of water? She said, of course you can. And while you're resting and drinking water, do you mind if I draw water for your camels as well? To me, this is the most amazing prayer in the Bible. The moment he prayed, the stranger comes along and answers the very pray, prayer that he prayed and offered to draw water for his camels. He, he nearly fell into the well. He said, can I meet your parents? And whenever he met the parents, you know what he said? I being in the way the Lord led me. Boys and girls, a wonderful thing to be in God's path for your life, to be in the way God leads you, the way God led you. And I told him what happened. I prayed, he said. And your daughter came along, Rebecca. And I asked her for a drink. And I prayed, Lord, if she offers to give my camels water. Camels are a huge animal. There's 10 of them. They've got at least three stomachs each to go through the desert. She's carrying at least 30 buckets of water. That's not natural. That's not normal. But with God... Nothing is impossible. Then the man said to the daughter, Are you willing to go with this man to marry Isaac? Do you know what she said? I am. What a picture of faith. Willing to go with a man to marry the man she never met. Remember we told you Isaac's a picture of the Lord Jesus. That's what faith is. But willing to follow Jesus. You've never met him. To, willing, to be willing to believe in him. We've never met him. We've just read about him. That takes faith. And some people say, I don't believe in God because I've never seen him. Nobody's ever seen God. 
It's just faith believing he is the God of heaven, the God of Israel, and the God of my life and my heart. I mean, Rebecca jumps on that camel and she makes a big long journey back to Abraham, back to Isaac. And she said, who's that man in the field? And he said, it's Isaac. And the Bible says when Isaac saw Rebecca, he loved her. And she loved her. And you know what they done? They kissed. Yes. They get married. Into the tent they get married. And you know what happened? A lovely picture. They get married. And then they had two little sons who were twins. Do you want to know about them? We're going to tell you on Friday. Okay, so following that story of Isaac, we've got a quiz. Ten questions of school. In case you forget what school looks like. We've got school, five girls, four, four boys, four girls, a bus and the teacher. Girls, we're always like the start of the girls. Uh, in case you're watching on Monday, the boys actually won the quiz, but we give it to the girls. Joanna told me after. She said, I can't count. So girls, you really need to win today. Right. Uh, girls, who was the wee boy Isaac in the story today? What was his name? Yes? Gonna pass it to the boys if you don't know the answer. Isaac. Don't shout to the death. Isaac. Right, what number? Do you want to be a girl? Three. Okay. Woo. Well done, girls. You got 40. Boys, what did you call Isaac's father? Abraham. Well done. No, no, you can't have the school. The wee boy at the door. But, okay, five. Minus 50. I mean, start it. Oh, dear. Girls, you do well. Um, boys, oh, sorry, girls. Um, what did God ask Abraham to do? Not to sacrifice his son, to prepare his son for a sacrifice good. What do you want? Six. Oh, 50. Well done, girl. That's 90. Uh, girl, boys, um, who can tell me how far away the Mount Moriah was? That journey, how many miles? 50, 100 or 200? 200, no? 50, yes, well done. The bus, yes, you can have the bus. That's a happy bus. What do you got? 50, well done. So you're back to zero. Girls have got 90. Boys have got zero. Oh dear. Girls, uh, in the, in the story today, we talked about Abraham and Isaac. What promise did God give Abraham before Isaac was born? He would have a son. Well done. What do you want? Uh, eight? Sorry, nine. Okay, nine. 150! Woo! That's a lot. Boys, uh, at the very, very start, who came to visit Abraham and Sarah to remind them they're going to have a son? Angels, yes? You want a teacher? Okay. Teacher, what do you want? Teacher, 150. That's good. Uh, girls, you've got 240. Boys have got 150. And there's four left. Girls, who can tell me, uh, we talked about Abraham and Isaac and I went up the mountain. Um, what was sacrificed instead of Isaac? A ram, a male sheep. Well done. Right, girls, 10. Sorry, eight. Okay. 20. That's good. A bit lower than normal. Helps. Boys, uh, Isaac didn't have to die that day. The ram became something beginning with S. What was it? A substitute. Well done. Uh, four. Yep. Woo! 100. So 250 against 260. Ha! And it's a final one. Girls, you're winning by 10. I can't believe the boys have come back so quick. It's quite exciting when the girls are winning and the boys catch up, but they haven't won yet. Okay, girls, uh, the Lord, this picture, Abraham reminded us of God and the altar reminds us of the cross. Who did Isaac remind us of in the story? Jesus, that's right. Only Jesus did die. Girls, 10. Girl versus boy. What is it? Sorry for laughing. My, my hand up in the air, but I can't write the score. <laughs> I need a calculator. 230. Boys, I've got 250. Girls, I've got 230. So boys, you just need a plus number. You can even lose 10 points. But any more than that, you've had it. <laughs> I can't believe the boys are going to win. Sorry, are winning so far. Uh, can't think of another question. So the boys win. Oh, better think of another question. 
Oh yes, I told you in the story, a wee Bible verse, and it said, Abraham, it talked about, was a friend. He was a friend of who? A friend of God. Wonderful. Friend of God. Ha ha! La 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 la! What do you got? Pass number! Oh no. 250 minus 32! 220 niggers! 220 and the. Bad ah, no! Boys got 220 and the girls won! By 10! And they got 230. Well done, girls! Absolutely brilliant! Yes? Go and get yourselves a wee cup of tea and a wee bun. Mmm. Well done. I'm actually su surprised, but very happy for you girls. Do you know some girls were writing into me and saying, Can you get Joanna to do the quiz? It's a fight. Messed it up. So you won. Right, we're going to now go to watch our next slot of children picking up the rubbish, keeping the country tidy. All right? Boom. along your road and in the hedges and the ditches and remember keep your country tidy and make a habit of doing that every so often when you're walking take a bag and pick up the rubbish don't forget to wash your hands and wear your gloves and all those things all right to keep healthy god you're good to me let's sing a final song action on your feet ready and god you're good to me
pray, folks. Don't forget prizes. We're still calculating the, the best prizes. It's going to be at least 10 for picking up the rubbish. 10 families, if you were involved, uh, don't send any more. And that's it finished. And then we'll give them as well as 10 prizes for the worksheet. And don't forget to put your name, your age, where you're from. And God himself will provide himself a lamb, a lovely picture of the Lord Jesus, Abraham, his son Isaac. And a word search. And any questions or comments you have, put them in the wee box here to Colin. And then don't forget to send them off to the email, worksheetsbycolin at gmail.com or messenger to Hope for Youth Ministries. You'll see it on the YouTube or Facebook where to send it to you, okay? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for Bible Club and Assembly today. And we'll think of this lovely story and for all the children who have been out picking up litter to keep their country tidy, God's wonderful creation. And Father, we just pray you bless the children at home and soon we'll be able to let, let be out again. In your loving name we pray. Amen.